Today we will teach you about something called dimensional analysis. Dimensional analysis is a method used to convert units. It uses something called conversion factors. Conversion factors are something that you're used to. So for example, let's say you wanted to convert from minutes into hours. You would use the conversion factor 60 minutes equals one hour or 24 hours equals one day. Those are examples of time. You also have conversion factors for length, such as 100 centimeters equal one meter, or 12 inches equal one foot. You also have conversion factors for mass, such as 16 ounces equal a pound. There are important measurement prefixes that you will need to know, and depending on your teacher, your teacher may expect you to memorize these, or she may give you, or he or she may give you something on a quiz or a test to use. But it's important for you to note that there are different ways to modify these base units. So in chemistry, the base unit for mass is grams, the base unit for volume is liters, and the base unit for length is meters. So for the mega prefix, mega is a large prefix. It has the symbol capital M. It means one million. An example would be one mega meter equals a million meters. Kilo has the symbol lowercase k, it means 1,000. One kiloliter equals 1,000 liters. If you notice, these pre prefixes can be used to modify any of the base units. So maybe I change this to be uh, one mega liter. That would equal a million liters. Either way, you're still going to be using the base unit and modifying it using the prefix. For deci, we're now getting into the smaller prefixes. Deci means tenth. So for example, one meter equals 10 decimeters. Centi has the symbol lowercase c, meaning is hundredth. One liter equals 100 centiliters. Milli has the symbol lowercase m. The base unit is thousandth. And so one gram equals 1,000 milligrams. And micro has a fancy symbol that looks like a U with a little hook in front. That is the Greek symbol called mu. And so that is millionth. And so for example, one meter equals one times 10 to the sixth micrometers. This is a really helpful summary and visual for students to review, because if you notice, I group them so that you have the, brief, the big prefixes on the top, you have the small prefixes on the bottom, and the base units is what separates them. Another really helpful hint is you always want to put the one with the bigger unit. So what that means is, if I go back, we can see that, for example, up here, mega is bigger than the base unit. So that's why I put the one with the mega meter and not with the meter. Conversely, the base unit is larger than deci. So that's why I put one meter equals 10 decimeters. Another way to look at it is it takes 10 decimeters to equal one meter. So it takes a lot more of the smaller prefix to equal the larger one. Dimensional analysis is what you are going to be using throughout the school year. This skill is imperative to your success in chemistry. It is incredibly important that you take notes on this so you understand what is expected of you throughout the school year. The first step for using dimensional analysis is to write the K and the U. The K is what you know and the U is what you're trying to find. For my students, typically I teach the K and the U at first, but eventually they do so well with dimensional analysis, they won't need it anymore. So you really just want to pay attention to what your teacher says as far as if you need to include the known and the unknown. For right now, I highly recommend that you do this. The second step is to write out the plan. So you write out the units that you are converting from and converting to. Again, this is just a helpful strategy since you're so new at dimensional analysis. Step three is to write your known and put it over one. Step four is to write a multiplication sign and a line. Step five is to write the known units in the denominator. Now we're gonna head into our first example where I use these steps. 
For example, how many centimeters are in 2.7 meters? Again, you may say, I can do this in my head. I do not need to use dimensional analysis. But in this part of the unit, our focus isn't about you getting the right answer. The focus is on you learning the process of dimensional analysis because you are going to have to use that later on when the calculations aren't so easy. Just like I stressed before, starting with the known and the unknown really helps. So we know that we have 2.7 meters and we want to know how many centimeters is this. Our next step is to take a look at the plan. So the plan is that we're going from meters into centimeters. And then one extra little step that will help you is write down the conversion factor that you need to do this. So on the previous slide, we learned that centi is a small prefix. Therefore, it's going to take a lot more centimeters to equal one meter. And remember, meter is a bigger unit. And so that's why we're going to put the one with that. So we will say that one meter equals 100 centimeters. Next up is to take your known and put it over one. After that, you write a multiplication sign and a line. Then we have to assemble what goes in the denominator. As we mentioned, that with dimensional analysis, we need to put the known units in the denominator. So what that means is meters has to end up in the denominator. So that means that one meter then has to go on the bottom. You can get this information up here in the right-hand corner. That's why it's really helpful to write out the conversion factor. On top would be the 100 centimeters. And then here's the cool thing about dimensional analysis. Both meters and meters will cancel. And then it'll leave the unit that you want, which is centimeters. So then you'll do your multiplication. And notice you'll multiply the 2.7 times 100, and that will give you 270. Notice I did round my answer to the proper number of significant figures. So my significant figures are based off of the number that I start with because 100 centimeters and 1 meter are considered exact numbers because it's a conversion factor. And so that's why I'm going to have only two sig figs in my final answer. Here's another example. How many feet are equal to 54.7 inches? Our known is going to be 54.7 inches. Our unknown are how many feet? The plan will look something like this. We'll start out with inches and go to feet. And you probably have prior knowledge that to go from inches into feet, 12 inches equal one foot. We'll then take our known and put it over one draw our multiplication sign and our line, and then notice our known units have to go in the denominator. Our known is going to be in inches, so that means that unit is what goes in the denominator. You may say, how many inches go with it? Well, that's where you look in the upper right-hand corner here, and you can see that 12 inches will go on bottom, and therefore one foot will go on top. And then just as I mentioned, inches and inches will divide out, and then you should end up with 4.56 feet. One thing to be really careful about when you do this is you have to make sure that whatever you have on bottom, you are using the division sign in your calculator. So when you type this in, you want to type 54.7 inches divided by 12. This is a two-step example now. So we've only been doing one steps or one conversion factors. Now it's time to go on to the two-step problems. For example, how many kilograms are equal to 45,000 milligrams? The known is 45,000 milligrams. The unknown is how many kilograms? The plan, as you might expect, would be to go from milligrams into kilograms. But if you use the previous slide, notice there is no direct conversion factor that goes directly from milligrams into kilograms. And so that is why whenever you are going from one prefix to another prefix, you will have to go through the base unit. So you will go, for example, from milligrams into grams, and then from grams into kilograms. And then just like I did before, I would write those conversion factors needed to do that. 
So for example, 1,000 milligrams equals one gram, and 1,000 grams equals one kilogram. This is called a two-step process because if you notice, you have one conversion factor here and a second one over here. Now comes time for the dimensional analysis. So we'll take the 45,000 and put it over one, draw our multiplication sign and our line. As I mentioned, the known uh, units will go in the denominator. So you'll have 1,000 milligrams on bottom and then one gram on top. You'll probably notice that both milligrams and milligrams will cancel and that will leave the unit of grams. That's great, you did the first step, but we're not done yet because if you look back to where the unknown is, and this is why the unknown is so important, notice we need kilograms as our answer. What that tells us is we need to do one more step. So that one more step is now gonna incorporate this conversion factor that I have over here. So I'm going to then put 1,000 grams on bottom and one kilogram on top. Grams and grams will divide out, and again, we did well because we have kilograms, which is the unit that we want in our answer. As I mentioned before, be really careful to make sure that you multiply by everything on top and divide by everything on bottom. So when you put this into your calculator, you'll type in 45,000, but then you have to hit the division sign 1,000 and then hit the division sign again 1,000. Alternatively, what you could do is multiply straight across, write down your answer, multiply straight across for the denominator, write your answer, and then do the division by itself. But again, that's up to you. When you do this, your answer should be 0 0.045 kilograms. Notice this answer does have the correct number of sig figs because we start with two here and we have two here. This zero is not significant because it's a leading zero. As I mentioned, whenever you see that you are going from one prefix to another prefix, you will always have two conversion factors and you must always go through the base unit. One final note, and I mentioned this earlier, but dimensional analysis is the approved method we will use to solve chemistry problems in our class. Although moving the decimal point is how you can get the correct answer, you are not going to be given credit for any problems not done using dimensional analysis. Failure to use dimensional analysis on homework quizzes and tests will most likely result in a zero for these assignments because as I mentioned, the importance isn't about getting the right answer, it's about the method that we're using to get it. Please make sure that you adhere to these guidelines and pay attention to the guidelines set forth by your teacher. And good luck. Thank you so much for watching.